Low-end body piercing jewelry. Going to give you pros and cons, five advantages, five disadvantages. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 70. So stick around. are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking with a amount of uh, knowledge and expertise that comes with being in the industry of the piercing of the body for at least 26 years. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, this is the third episode in this kind of uh, pros and cons on the different levels of, of jewelry and jewelry manufacturers. We start out with the high-end stuff, which is the very expensive, very great, wonderful stuff uh, produced by manufacturers like uh, BBLA, uh, Anatom Metal, Industrial Strength, Body Circle, uh, and various other manufacturers of that caliber. Then last week, we talked about the mid-level. Mid-level is maybe the manufacturing isn't quite as good, maybe the finish isn't quite as good, but at least we have certification that it is, by a third party, biocompatible. That brings us to this stuff, the low-end stuff, the stuff that is mass-produced, um, usually is available on various different websites for pennies on the dollar, or on Amazon, where you can buy 100 of these for $10. This is mass-produced garbage. Nobody knows exactly what it's made out of or where it came from. It just suddenly appears, and let me tell you, there's a lot of it. So let's get into it. I'm going to give you five advantages, five disadvantages, five pros, five cons. Let's start with the pros. Number one, it's cheap. You can buy lots and lots of this stuff or next to nothing. Um... I have seen pieces that if you would buy from even a mid-level uh, manufacturer would run $10, $15. I found the equality of that or the equal or of that same design, size, shape, etc., for like $2. And there's a package of eight of them. So yeah, it's really, really cheap stuff. And you get what you pay for. Number two. It is always in stock because this stuff is mass produced on such a level and there's no real thought or process. There's a lot, a lot of man hours and skill that's put into producing them. They can produce a heck of a lot of them. So they're always in stock. You're always going to be able to find this type of crap at somewhere, either online or many retail shops. Number three, it might be safe. We really don't know because there isn't any third-party verification or certification of what these materials are made out of or what this jewelry, uh, what the material this jewelry is made out of. So it may be biocompatible. It may not be. It might be the same material they make bicycle spokes out of. It might be better than that. We do not know. There is no way of knowing it. And a lot of people are confused by this. Uh, there's usually a couple of numbers that are thrown around on a regular basis. One of them being is 316L. Now, 316L is, a, is basically the formula for surgical stainless steel. It can represent everything from, like I mentioned earlier, bicycle spokes all the way up to high-end body piercing jewelry and medical equipment. The difference between those two levels is the purity of the material or alloy. Um, lower grade, even though it's made of the same exact materials, the process that's used to make the material or make the alloy usually isn't done as in, in as clean of an environment. So thus you get more impurities in there and more likelihood of you having a reaction to that metal, um, also to it being corrosive and various other problems. So, just so we know that, so I don't have to cover it later. Number four, it's easy to replace. Yes, there's lots of this stuff. If you break it or it falls apart or what have you, you're, it's going to be fairly easy to find a replacement part. Higher end jewelry, sometimes it might take a while. This stuff, you just throw that piece of jewelry out and get another one. 
Lastly, number five, this stuff can work in a pinch. If you have a situation where, let's say, you've lost an end off of a LeBray piercing and you don't want that piercing to close, uh, it, it'll work in a pinch to go out and buy some of this crap, put it in your in the piercing and wear it for a few days until you can get in somewhere and get a replacement balls uh, or a replacement in to replace that lost ball. So it can work in that way. Now let's move on to the easy part, the cons, the disadvantages of low-grade piercing jewelry. Number one, and I've kind of breezed over this before, you have no idea what the what the hell this stuff's made out of. Uh, you don't know if it's implant-grade steel, if it's even surgical stainless steel, if it's 316L, it, you don't know. There's no way of knowing. It is full-on buyer beware. I have seen various different materials come across my... Uh, across my piercing path, so to speak, that people have asked me to change jewelry from one piece to another piece and brought in this stuff. And it, it's re there's no way to just look at it and go, oh yeah, that's implant grade. You're basically, without that third party certification, you do not know what it is made out of. And that can be very dangerous. The second one, uh, number two, it usually has a low quality finish. Now this is a problem because that finish is often the one thing that's gonna protect you from the parts of the alloy that could possibly cause reactions or be dangerous. For example, with surgical stainless steel, 316L, the L stands for lead. Also there's nickel in there. So if you're sensitive to nickel or there's this possibility of lead poisoning, it's very important to make sure that polish is super high quality and durable and doesn't wear off. With low-end jewelry, this tends to happen. It'll turn almost an aluminum or polished aluminum look, um, basically because you've worked off that entire finish um, and it's done. Number three, low build quality. Um, anybody that's uh, gotten a barbell that's of this quality and actually literally put it on the end and went like a quarter turn, it was tight, understands that it doesn't, they do not put as much thought and as much care into producing this jewelry. It's done on the fly, it's done as cheaply and inexpensively as possible with no idea or care of what is going to happen once that stuff leaves the factory. Um, uh, the other issue of it is, is often I've had people bring in pieces to, and they're like, well, can, I bought this at blah, 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 and it was really cheap. Can you sterilize it for me? And I'll put it in the autoclave. It'll be one of those uh, overly gaudy things with tons of gemstones in it and et cetera. You put it in the autoclave, you heat it up to 121 degrees Celsius uh, under pressure for 15 minutes, and the epoxy melts and the whole thing falls apart. So you are getting what you're paying for. I had a client in about two or three months ago, and now it's been longer than that, who had bought a number of barbells and a lot off of uh, Amazon. She had bit down on the, one of these barbells and bent it into a U or V shape in her tongue. Not only had the balls, which were plastic, God knows if they were acrylic or not, not only had they been tightened onto the point where they were stripped and would not come free, but it was causing pressure. She had, been, she had just bit down on it and the thing just pancaked. That is That puts a lot of questions in mind, including the quality of the jewelry, what it's made out of, and the manufacturing that's went into producing it. Number four, often plated. Um, because we're back to this whole thing, you don't know what it's made out of. Uh, a lot of this stuff, even what they're selling is titanium or oxidized or anodized, I should say, not oxidized, uh, different colors. In a lot of cases, it's a thin layer of plating. They hide this behind PVD and various other things. Uh, usually after a short period of time, your body wears off that plating and you are stuck with whatever the undercoating is. And sometimes that's stainless steel. A lot of times it isn't. Number five, I kind of already alluded to this, but a lot of this jewelry you cannot sterilize. It will melt and fall apart in the autoclave. The minute you put it in there, it's just not good. You don't want to pierce with this stuff because of the finish is so rough and et cetera. It's just not something you're gonna use a lot. Maybe in a well-heeled piercing, it might get you might get away with wearing this stuff in a pinch if you're not really sensitive to materials, but for the most part, you should avoid this type of jewelry. So I hope I've informed you and you've learned something about low-grade cheap jewelry and maybe a little bit of more understanding of why 
One company charges $32 for a piece of jewelry, and the other one charges $2.99. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it. I like it when you like it. Uh, if I brought up a question or you have a question or you want to add to the conversation, please leave a comment. I usually answer them if I have time. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something on here. Do check out our merch store, merch shelf below. Uh, various different teachers, t-shirts, various different designs. You can get everything on there from uh, t-shirts to uh, pretty much uh, phone cases. Various different designs, various different colors. It helps support us, helps support the channel in the studio. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching. Go out, do something fun, do something relaxing, get pierced, what have you. Just be safe.